I'm Brian Thong. Advent is a time of waiting for God to come among us. We remember waiting for baby Jesus to be born, and we also wait and look for new ways that God will come. Since this is the second week of Advent, we'll light two candles. This reminds us that God is light, coming into the dark and confusing places of our world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our day and for one another. We thank you for loving us and bringing light into our world. Help us to see you when you come so that we can help you take the light to the people who need it. Help us to watch and wait patiently for Christmas. Amen. The story I have today is The Star of Melvin. Melvin was an angel. He was not a very important angel. He did not sit at the right hand of God. He did not sit at the left hand of God. When all the angels assembled and sat to hear the wisdom of God, Melvin stood. Melvin stood, holding a broom and a box, waiting. And when Melvin saw any letter, he would rush over and sweep it into his box. It wasn't much of a job. Angels were so very clean. Maybe once in a thousand years, a tiny feather would flutter down to be pounced on and swept up by Melvin. What Melvin really wanted to be was a cloud sweeper, or best of best, a star shiner. Whenever a job opening was posted on the heavenly bulletin board, Melvin was first in line. But when he was given a cloud broom and told to sweep, the broom was so large and Melvin so small that the broom swept Melvin. And as for the polishing cloth of a star shiner, Melvin could barely lift it. And when he did, it exploded out of his hands and swallowed him in its soft, soft folds. Melvin didn't stop trying though, and one day, to his astonishment, he was not only first in line, he was the whole of the line. Am I too early? Melvin asked the angel in charge. The angel in charge did not look up from the large ledger his quail pen was hurrying across. No. Am I too late? The angel in charge crossed the T and dotted an I. You are just in time. He held out a polishing cloth. Go 10 million miles to the west and take one step left and you will find the star you have been assigned. Melvin couldn't believe his ears. He had been made a star shiner. He couldn't believe his eyes either. The polishing cloth fitted his hands perfectly. It's a very small star, said the angel in charge. Do you want the job? I do, I do, cried Melvin. Good, because nobody else does. It wasn't the sort of star most star shiners would like. It was really very small, and it was dull. There was hardly a glimmer to it. But it was all that Melvin had ever wanted. He polished his star morning and noon, and far into the evening when the other star shiners had put aside their polishing cloths, Melvin would still be polishing away. Even when Melvin was going home, he never left all at once. He would always come back to give his star one more rub with the sleeve of his robe. Slowly, not in a day or a year, or 2,000 years, 
Melvin's dull star began to shine. The heavens around it had been dark and foreboding grew brighter and happier. Melvin's days were so joyously busy that if his friend Gamaliel had not come visiting, he never would have heard of the competition. But Gamaliel did come visiting, and when he saw Melvin's star sparkling away, he said, you should enter your star in the star contest, Melvin. Melvin looked at his star. It's kind of small for a contest. Gamaliel said, nothing was said about large, Melvin. This is a very bright and very cheery star. It is, Melvin agreed. This time, Melvin wasn't first in line. He was last. In front of him stood some huge, stood huge angel after a huge angel starshiner, each one holding a gigantic, fiercely glittering star. Melvin nudged, excuse me, Gamaliel nudged Melvin. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. Big isn't everything, Melvin said, giving his star another rub. The line moved slowly past God. Each magnificent, fiery star was presented to him. God would shake his head and say, No, no, it's not right for a birthday. The last, only Melvin was left. But just as Melvin was about to stand before God with his star, a trumpet call sounded. Heaven trembled, and the angels threw up their hands in despair. The archangel Gabriel had come to enter the contest and the Archangel Gabriel never lost. With a great golden trumpet in his right hand and a tremendous star held high in his left, Gabriel stalked down the Isle of Angels. He presented his star to God. The star, the star twirled and sparkled with every color that it had ever been or would be. Then Gabriel stepped back waiting to be proclaimed the winner. But God, who sees everything, saw Melvin still waiting. The contest is not yet over, he said. Come, Melvin, show me your star. Melvin stepped forward and held up his star for God. God looked down at the gently shining star and nodded his head. He smiled. Melvin, you understood, God said. This is the right star. All the angels in heaven cheered, and Gabriel blew a note on his golden trumpet. Now, Melvin, said God, come with me. Holding his star, Melvin followed God, followed as God walked across the heavens. Every so often God looked back at the cheery light of Melvin's star. He'll like it, God said. Yes, he'll like it. At last God stopped at a dark and empty space. Place it here, Melvin. So, so yeah, just so. How nicely it fits, God said. How its light gladdens what it shines upon. Look, Melvin, look. Melvin gave his star one last rub with the sleeve of his robe. Then, as the star shone brighter and brighter, Melvin looked down upon the town of Bethlehem. Before we blow out the candle, let's say a prayer. Keep watch, dear Lord, over those who work or watch, or weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen.